So here we go then, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Kings of Anglia Track the Girls Tour podcast, which is proudly sponsored by John Fowler Solicitors. Big up Mark Kennedy and the team for their continued support. And we're back earlier than announced um, on the previous podcast. We said we aren't going to be back this week because um, we had a double header against Cheltenham. But um, there's no game this weekend, so we thought we'll come here early. And of course, I'm joined by my co-host and town woman skipper, Blue Wilson. Always a pleasure, Blue Ski. Um, how's things? And... Uh, what a weekend uh, for both teams, the men and the women. A lot of goals scored and uh, two wins. Yeah, I'm good. I'm all good. It has been a good weekend for sure. I think uh women's team is six out of seven now. Men's team is seven out of eight. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So bloody flying. Um, but yeah, I'm all good. Um, a little exclusive for uh, Tractor Girls Talk listeners. Um, I ran for the first time yesterday since the third surgery, um, which was good, felt very good. Um, it's probably the smoothest my knees have felt. And although that sounds strange, if you've ever had any knee issues or whatever, you'll understand what I mean. Like, uh, there's no clunking. Oh, it feels so good. Um, so, yeah, it was only a few minutes, so nothing to get too, too excited about. I'm not returning in the next week or so. Um, but, yeah, moves in the right direction. Um, and, yeah, rehab is going well. Um, so yeah, all good in my world, Ross. How are you? I'm very well, and I'm, I'm buzzing to hear that. You know, it's the journey that you've been on, and uh, when you know a player's on the grass doing a bit of running, um, it's just you know the, the first step in it, blue. And uh, yeah, what, what's the next stage after that? Is it just for the rest of the week now? Is just you know, continue to up that? Um, so yes. Although it, you have to take it in stages because obviously that was the first time I'd run or done impact on the knee. So you have to wait and see if it's flared up. So it's only yesterday. Um, there hasn't been too much flare up, which is good. Um, but you kind of have to, if you go, if you run too quickly in all senses, um, it sort of puts you at a disadvantage because it's more likely for the knee to flare up and set you back. Um, so it's steadier progress, um, but basically just upping like strength work in the gym, um, building strength back up because I did lose a bit um, when I was out. Um, and then, yeah, go from there, slowly build up, not going too quickly um, and just ensuring that I am right um, for when I return. But yeah, it's all, it's all moving in the right direction. I'm I'm at a point where I'm quite happy for it to be moving slowly. Probably blue two years ago would be like, okay, when's the next one? When, when's the next? And there still is that urgency, um, but it's just with a, probably a smarter head, um, having learned from mistakes and also been through the process where it's sometimes unfair. So you have to you have to take those risks and weigh up the benefits, um, but. All in all, good news so far, um, and I'll continue to keep you posted. Love to hear it, and I'm sure the listeners and the fans out there are happy to hear that exclusive bit of news on the podcast. That's what we do. It's what we bring you. We brought the Lucio O'Brien exclusive from Tash. We brought, yeah, we brought you loads of different exclusives, which is good to see. Um, and little fun story, Blue, before we get into the game. Of course, eight goals on the weekend. Tash is on fire with four goals, and everyone else as well. Um, but you are. Uh, just when you were coming out of a lift, you were bumped into a, a, a former Ballon d'Or nominee, um, of course, current town player who um, scored the winner on the weekend, Massimo Luongo. Yes, I did. I was just coming out of, uh, well, actually, no, I was, I'd been shopping, coming back um, into my building, and I'd never seen him in my building before. There is another player um, who lives around where I live, so I sometimes see him. Um, but I go to get in the lift. Normally, there's no one really in it. So you just sort of press it and then assume no one's in it. And um, <laughs> I open it and Massimo stood there. I'm like, so I just nod. And he, he walks past. I'm like, yeah, OK. I think he's probably my favourite Ipswich player at the minute. Um, so, yeah, that was a, an interesting interaction. Literally a nod. But, um, yeah, I've heard he's a great guy and a great player. Seriously, class player. So, um yeah, a little exclusive for you. Yeah, he uh, he dropped into the Kings of Anglia DMs because we, um, myself and Steve, the other photographer, we captured some really good um, pictures of these celebrations. So uh, he was dropping our DMs. But yeah, what a player with oh. the chant, you know, here, there, everywhere, you know, yes. Massimo, 
Um, and of course, got another part of that chart as well, but we can't do it on this. It's a, it's a family show. Um, but yeah, he's a class player and, uh, you know, the men's team are just playing so well at the moment, you know, doing really well. As you mentioned, you know, seven wins out of eight. Of course, town six, town women six wins out of seven. And um, that segues nicely, Blue. Actually, before we get onto that, sorry, Blue. You said you went shopping. Where where do you go? Other supermarkets available, of course. But what's your what's your go to? Um, I am a Sainsbury's shopper. Occasionally, Asda because that's more on my way. But it's just not the same as Sainsbury's. And now they've brought brought in the next card thing. Yeah. I know they just hike their prices up and keep the next price what you would have paid anyway. I'm aware of that, but I just makes I like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Tesco man. I've got a club really? card because um, yeah. there's just Tesco's near me. I've got a Tesco's like down there, it's like a metro, and then there's like the big one at Marsham. Um, so that's just that's just ideal. Yeah, my closest Sainsbury's is probably I don't actually know. Clear the Euro Park sort of thing. I think. Okay. That's, yeah, I think yeah, I know the one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Asda the closest one for me. Asda is a bit of a way as well, so it's, it's I'm a Tesco man. And yeah, are you because it's basically club card is like the nectar card. But mm-hmm. um, I saw a story. It is a bit of a a con, really. It doesn't actually. It's a scam. Yeah, it's a scam. <laughs> but it makes me feel good once I've scanned everything and yeah. I see I see the price, and then I scan my nectar card, and it whacks a load off, and I'm I'm happy with that. So you know, there's if you don't think about it too much, it makes me happy. Yeah, I will admit when I go, yeah, when I do go into the store and I do see the club card, you know, it's in yellow. I'm like, yep, getting that, getting that, getting that. And I do get, like, we do get vouchers sent. And when I come, I'm like, oh, how much have I got this time? (laughs) About 50. (laughs) It's like, okay, okay, uh, that can pay for the next meal deal or whatever. Because, yeah, meal deals now are bloody expensive. So there we go. Just what I wanted to ask when you mentioned that, that just straight away, you know, let the, the viewers know where we shop, Sainsbury's, Tesco's, um, just wherever I'm closest to, I'll go in. So there we go. Um, well, let's talk then, Blue, about the game. Chatham and Town were the visitors, and um, we did the same thing to them that we did last year to them at home, beat them 8 0. So uh, I didn't think of that until I think actually yesterday, where I was like, oh, yeah, we, we've done the same score on against them in back to back games at home, which is. Uh, which is interesting because you know we're a bit we're a different team now. They're a different team. I think they've they've brought some new players in and they've got rid of some players. Um, but yeah, where should we start? Um, we're only two 0 up in the first half. Um, but let's talk about the team because Poppy was back in goal. I think that's probably the only change I can think of. Oh no, of course Megan Waring wasn't yes. playing. Yes, and we'll get onto her shortly because winning cats of Scotland. But I think that was the only other changes. I think. Yeah, so yeah, I so, believe so. I believe yeah. so. Someone will correct us otherwise. <laughs> or did because if Megan drops out, then you could show how, how professional I am, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Leah, Leah came in. Um, Ruby, oh, yeah, yeah, it's been Leah. It was, yeah, so midfield was the same. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it was the same. So there we go. But um, yeah, all in all, I think it was our best performance of this season. Um, clinical um and like you said it took us half an hour almost half an hour to score the first goal and that is credit to Cheltenham because they pressed us hard in the first half um they gave it a real go um and we were sort of saying on the bench I mean if they can keep this up for the whole game fair play to them because they were they were pressing our centre-backs which a lot of teams don't do um and yeah really aggressive really aggressive team um and yeah it once that first goal went in you almost saw that everyone lifted and everyone was like okay well we've got one how many can we get here um and I think they had a chance before um the before half time uh which would have made it 2-1 and I think that makes a big difference going into the half 2-0 up or 2-1 up um I think because we were 2-0, it's like, okay, how can we build on this? Because we've got a decent gap. If it's 2-1, you're almost like, okay, we need, there's more pressure on that third because if the next goal goes to them, then who knows? Um, because they're one of those sort of chance teams, although the score doesn't reflect it. I think once they have that bit between their teeth, they're a team that could be quite hard to beat. Um, but yeah, other than that, it was the second half was ridiculous. 
so clinical. Um, obviously, Tash, four goals. When, <laughs> when we said um, 150 appearances, or was it 200 appearances or 150 goals first? Yeah. She is quite literally taken that literally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so fair play to her. Everything she's touched at the minute is turned into gold. Um, and I really hope that continues uh, because she's been bloody on fire. Um, but yeah, it was great to watch. Lots of fans there. And yeah, all around a great day, I think. You just cover all bases there, Blue. Yeah, yeah I just went for it. You know when you start fine. and you just keep going? Yeah, yeah, because it's all in but your we'll mind. We'll get into I've... more of the details. We'll get into more yeah. of the details. Now. Yeah, I've done the same where I've like, I've had all the my bullet points and then I just want to just take it all out now. I just want to say it now <laughs> because I don't want to forget something like a good like little note. Um, but yeah, you know, fair play to Cheltenham. You know, I know they just lost 8-0, but it's a long way to go. And, you know, when we're clinical and when we're, we're, we are ruthless, you know, no team can stop us. Um, and they did do well in that first half, as you mentioned. And, uh, yeah, Tash getting her two first goals in the first half. And um, her celebration for the first goal, she ran over, of course, and high-fived Mark Ashton. And um, I want to apologise and um, sort of do a peek behind the curtain thing here. Um, I did two boo-boos. Now, the first boo-boo is that I probably was not situated in a good position to get the, that said photo because obviously I'm behind the goal and there's so many bodies in the way. Their goalkeeper decided just to stand in my way for the whole that celebration. Um, and I think I got maybe just about a nice picture of it until the second boo-boo. Um, and actually, it's not my fault. It's actually my, my SD card. Basically, it corrupted my SD card. So I lost about probably 80 photos of that first goal and maybe some other, you know, action pictures. So, you know, in the end, it didn't matter because I, I didn't have the photo anyway. But I was worrying, though, for the rest of the game, Blue, like, is my SD cards? Because I, I just got rid of that SD card, but then I was thinking, could it be my reader or could it be my SD cards? Thankfully, as you can see, there's pictures now. But um, I was worried, Blue, at one stage. Like, I may not have any pictures from this game because I've already lost the first goal. Am I going to lose the rest? So, what a game! What a game for it to be corrupted as well. If it was the whole thing, yeah. Although it's not the first time it's happened, I think you know it's happened many times because you know I think after a while SD cards they get a bit worn and torn and they get a bit old. I think the the worst game happened, of course, it was the West uh, was it the West Ham game. Yeah, West yeah, Ham game. Yeah. My my camera decided or my lens decided to like break. I was like, perfect, Ross. Our biggest game in our history. Um, you know, quarter final live on TV, and my camera decides to play silly buckets. Luckily, I brought another lens with me because if I didn't, I would have not got no pictures. But um, anyway, enough about me. It's all about Tash because she scored two good goals in the first half, and that was really it. Then the second half came, and it was an ideal start one at Blue um, because Chatham were just about getting into the game, and you know we needed to kill it off, didn't we? You know, two nil can be a dangerous scoreline sometimes you know if they got a goal back and you think oh, okay this could be cagey but you know quick fire goals Leonard Gunn and Williams she's been unbelievable and she and Ruby Doe let's talk about those duo because they scored the next two goals um never top performance from both of those you know we'll talk about the front four shortly but you know two young players coming in on loan and both of them scoring some more goals yeah, exactly. Um, we're having conversations on the bench and I was like, we need to have a stat where it's like slides, slide tackles per game because Ruby Doe would be top of it. Um, absolutely loves a slide tackle and is so, so good out of possession. I think probably one of the best attacking players I've seen out of possession. She's just so desperate to get the ball back and it shows. Um, and then obviously has the quality in possession as well. Add to the goal, which was great to see. Um, and also Lena who's a bloody good player as well. So <laughs> once again, the sort of loan system from, obviously, Lennon's from Spurs and Ruby's from Arsenal, like Freya was, um, is really helping us out and obviously adding to their development too, because I'm sure, although, you know, Cheltenham on paper looks like an easy game, for them to be involved in that is great for their development instead of just playing 21's football. Um, so, yeah, let's, I think we're very lucky to have them. Um, and I hope it continues because the performances so far, it's been a pretty seamless transition into a, a new team. They didn't really know anyone. Um, and yeah, top performances, the whole of the front four, really. If, at the minute, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> just give it, just give it to them and it's ending in a goal. Um, so yeah, really pleased for both of them. 
Um, and yes, it's, it's, uh, I'm I'm glad we're doing this pod, especially after an eight 0 win. You I always look forward to the pods after a big win um, because there's so much to talk through, and I know we'll get on to favourite goals later. Um, but I do want to mention a bit on ref watch. Okay. I don't know about um, your opinion on the ref's performance or your angle for when the keeper, the Cheltenham keeper, picked the ball up, and the bench went crazy. Yeah. yeah, honestly, it must have been. If you're watching this, about that much. I don't know how much that is, and is that a foot? I don't know. Outside the box, the keeper's picked it up, and the ref has just waved it away. The lino goes. Yeah, it's oh yeah, line couldn't, line. See, couldn't see it. How can you see it? Anyway, yeah, not I, I the ref's performance was um interesting, we'll call it. But it didn't stop us, which is the main thing. Yeah, I think we've had a before, haven't we? That yeah. ref, and um I think I think Joe says something yeah. yeah. Um just say, you know, I think just with the ref, like just a little joke at before the game, you know, we're gonna fall fall out early doors. Um but yeah, it's it's one of those things. But uh, yeah, I was the other side of that. But I, I was looking over to the bench and everything, and I think everyone was like talking to the even to the liner going. Yeah. Like, when it's that big of a reaction, you know, like everyone was like, yeah. "What has just happened?" And I don't even know what happens in that point because is it a red or is it a yellow? Because it's not like a goal. It wasn't really a goal scoring opportunity. It probably wasn't close enough. But anyway, it didn't happen. Um, but should have happened. Yeah, it should have done. Yeah, but yeah, it's just one of those things. Thankfully, that didn't affect the game because we, no. we scored eight goals. But yeah, that could have been a big decision that could have affected anything if you know if it was nil nil, whatever at the time. But um, yeah, I want to um, yeah just shout out again to to Ruby and Lena because yeah they're, they've come up against you know as you mentioned they've they've been playing academy football which I'm sure is not as physical you know but they've had to you know play against some physical teams you know Chatham were a physical team London Bees were a physical team the previous week. Um, even the game against Hashtag, you know, I know we lost that game, but it was good experience for them to play against another team who play a different style of play. Um, but yeah, just both of them have just come into this team and um, they feel like they've been part of this team for ages, which is good to see. Um, then Tash got a hat-trick. Um, Kieran, with a, a, a terrible pun, sorry to say, Kieran. Oh, it's, it's you know, when you first see it, it's like, OK, but Tash-trick, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Sure. Okay, dog. I don't know, sure. okay, dog. That is a that's a that's a, a dad joke that, um, and you're not that old, my friend. But um, I know people like on Twitter when they do tweets and stuff. You know, it's always good to have a little fun with it. But Tash trick, not for me. But um, keep up the good work though, as always. But yeah, Tash gets a hat trick, and of course O'Brien with an assist. You know, a return last week with an assist. Second game in a row, she gets an assist. Yeah, that was. I was so happy to see that. Um, having sort of seen and heard how the sort of ups and downs of the injury she's just previously had. Um, like the the whole, like the whole of her demeanour has changed since she's been back on the pitch. That is insane how much happier as a human being she is. So for her to get that assist, I think looking at the celebration as well, she was absolutely buzzing. Um, and yeah, it was a great turn on the inside of the pitch. And she had a good few runs actually, um, especially against a, a physical side. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing her get, hopefully get a few more minutes um, and get back into form and start getting a bit of a rhythm. Um, but so far, I mean, she's come back with two assists, so it's pretty it's pretty good. Um, and yeah, Tash, again, she can't be stopped at the minute. No, she's on a different level this year, Tash. And um, we'll get on to her as a whole when she, when we get to her fourth goal. Because um we've got we've got to do a, a big you know segment on Tash just as a whole and maybe talk about her four goals as a whole. Um but then Pesket um scores her fifth goal of the season. What a strike and um nice celebration as well. Thanks, Pesk, right in front of me, which is good to see. Um but just the, the front four connecting so well, Blue, you know, all scoring, which is good to see. And you know, just it shows that you know they can all score, you know, they're, they're threat, you know, and we're not just relying on Tash's goal, we we can now rely on all them all those front four scoring. Yeah, it's not only Tash, like we've mentioned many times, Tash is informed, but also everyone around her is too, which is a huge benefit because, with, like you said, when you're relying on one player, the pressure on that player, if they have an off game or something like that, then suddenly where do our goals come from? But we haven't got that issue at all. They're coming from all around the pitch. 
which is, yeah, the amount of times we sort of asked for that on this pod over the past year has been crazy. Um, but it honestly feels like at the minute, I'm not sure we've had a, I've had more, more backing of the the front players at my time at Ipswich Town, I don't think. At the minute, we are primed. Um, so it's great to see. But I do want to give a shout out to the midfielders in the back line. Um, I'll start with the midfielders. Bonnie and Kyra, just solid. So solid. And Kyra, especially um, in the past couple of weeks, she sort of, there's almost a balance between where Bonnie is often in possession, passing the ball, and Kyra is sort of winning the ball back, dribbling, turning defenders around in circles, and then playing the ball. But I've definitely seen Kyra almost doing more of the sort of one-two touch uh, movements, which is obviously helping her game and helping us too. Um, but those two have been very, very good. Um, and it helps it helps massively for the front four when you've got such a solid base of those two. And then back line, obviously another clean sheet, which is great to see, um, especially with Meg going out um, and Leah coming back in. Uh, a few scares, but all in all, still a zero. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, because we, we, you know, we conceded a few goals, didn't we, early in the season? And mm-hmm. um, it's good to see they've got back-to-back clean sheets um, at home, which is good. And, um, yeah, I think it was a, a team performance. You know, I know the front four were scoring the goals, but everyone took their part. They got their assists as well. I think Kyra got an assist. I think Bonnie got an assist. I think Summer got an assist as well. Um, that's the just top of my head. Um, so everyone's just involved in this game. And you mm-hmm. can just see the celebrations as well. Just everyone's yeah. involved. It's not like, you know, everyone's just a few players walking back, they're all just part of that celebration and just enjoying it. And which was good to see because sometimes, you know, also you don't want to disrespect the opposition when you're like six nil up, but we, I think everyone, you just, just enjoying the moment and enjoying the goals, you know, especially um, when Tash makes her, scores her fourth goal of the, the afternoon and 11 goals now blue in seven games, just on another level this year. We had on the podcast the other week about how her preseason was. This was, I think, her sixth or seventh preseason with the club. Um, of course, you know, she's got the competition there with Holly and other players, but that's what, you know, for any players, you, you want that competition to, to thrive off. But she's just been just different this year, isn't she? I'm not saying last year she wasn't good because she still scored goals last year, but I think this season it's just something a, a bit different about her. And, yeah. you know, she's just thriving on it. Yeah, I think it's momentum. And also it shows how important confidence and form is for strikers. Um, because now I feel like she, I mean, you'd have to ask her, but I imagine compared to, say, the back end of last season where we were struggling a bit for goals, um, because now everything she's touching is going in, she's sort of carrying that forward like, OK, well, I'm going to score this next chance and everything, every chance that she is getting is going in. Perhaps there's less of a thought process of like, oh, what if this happens? What if I hit it over the bar or whatever? Um, but I've just calculated how many goals per game that is on my little calculator here. 1.57 goals per game, which is just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, so long may it continue. Um, and I think she, I think it helps the fact that she seems happier off the pitch. Um, and also on the pitch too, there's, I've definitely seen a shift in in her just being happy and I'm guessing the success is coming from that and it's only driving it more and more. Um, but obviously we, we don't want to put pressure on Tash to continue this because it's <laughs> at a ridiculous rate. Um, and you see even with the likes of Haaland, he's going to have a few, a few games where he doesn't score um, and that shouldn't really be too much of a shock um, because keep this rate throughout the season, I mean... I'll take it, but um, it'd be some going. Um, but yeah, credit to all those players helping her and feeding her with great assists and cross. Um, and yeah, long may it continue. Yeah, definitely. And I'm going to get a stat up because um, we, we mentioned you were saying, you know, what's she going to get first? 200 games? 120? Oh, yes. A little oh, update on that. Yeah. About 187 games, 137 goals. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, so, it's very difficult. It's 13 for, for both, 13 yeah. goals, 13 games. So, you know, when is it going to happen? Um, yeah, because if she goes and keeps Imagine scoring. the same game, Ross, 
that would wow. be perfect. Well, Bo, she probably wouldn't be happy with 13 goals in 13 games. She'd probably, you know, I mean, she's going to get one goal every game now. Well, at current rate, at current yeah. rate, she probably wouldn't, but I'd take that. 13 yeah. goals. If, if Tash came up with 13 goals in 13 games, I'd be more than happy with that. Well, she's already in double figures this season, you know, yes. which is fantastic. You know, seven games is just oh, unbelievable. Yeah. And would you say, Blue, um, you know, all the all the girls are lovely girls and they're, they're, they're nice. They're nice girls. But is is Tash one of the nicest person in, in the squad, do you reckon? Yes, for sure. Yeah. From for sure. So Definitely for her, for being like the... She is the superstar in the squad in terms. She's been yeah. here longer. She's that you know the club legend in terms of the record goal scorer. But just she's just so humble, isn't she? Yeah, no, she is. Wow. She's she's incredibly humble. Um, but I think it's because of the journey she's had. Yeah, and that that is potentially why she's obvious, she is a great person. Um, I made it seem like I was thinking about whether she was nice or not. It's because <laughs> we've got so many nice players in the squad at the minute. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a really good group. We all get along really well. Um, Definitely more sort of squad cohesion um, compared to last year, which is perhaps why we're, we're successful at the minute. Um, but yeah, she is up there with top top person as well, which is good to see. Um, so hopefully, Tash, I know you listen to these pods sometimes on your drive into training, so don't let it get to your head if you score more goals, please. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just coming from us, you know. It's coming just from us. <laughs> you know us, so it's all good. Um, I just wanted to mention that. Cause to be fair, Blue, the whole squad, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I've, uh, you know, I can see the behind the scenes stuff and stuff and just the whole group is probably the best I've seen it, you know. Mm, um, yeah. Just, you know, Joe's put together a fantastic squad of players, even the new signings, I think they're better than so well. Um, yeah. As you mentioned, you know, Ruby, um, Lena, even Poppy and, you know, Maisie as well, you know, Maisie playing, you know, she's playing. Laura, Laura as well. They're all, they're, all of them are great people. Yeah. All of them. There's no, there's been no friction um at all they're just all lovely people who are wanting to play good quality football so perfect for us yeah definitely and of course um you know even the young girls coming through you know some of the academy players you know erin made another appearance uh of course you know leah you know making a, another start uh, evie coming off the bench and uh nia evans scoring her first goal for a while she scored her first goal against qpr in the cup last year scoring absolutely well to a goal this one it was it's a goal. Uh, Lena, you know, maybe should have scored her opportunity, uh, but the keeper made a good save. But then Nia was there to get the rebound. Although at one stage I thought, oh, she could be missing this. Um, I think she didn't get the greatest contact on it, but thankfully it went in. And Lena, of course, left it. I think if Lena actually touched it, she would have been offside, wouldn't she? Um, yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, but uh, of course Nia makes it 8 0 to wrap up the win. Um, and I'm sure yeah, anybody, you take any goal. Um, and for her to come off the bench and score, I'm, I'm sure it was a nice moment for her. Yeah, we were all laughing on the bench because it literally dribbled in. Um, but yeah, it's good initiative from her to follow up. Um, and yeah, we are used to screamers from Nia. I think if you see her in training, the amount of screamers she scores. Um, she's probably one of the best players in our team at striking the ball. Um, just one of those who just... Can, or just, can just hit it and you can't really teach that it's sort of natural ability to just strike a ball well another one is Evie Williams she can also strike a ball well but yeah pleased for her um, and good for her to get some minutes as well definitely um, yeah I will admit that's probably not my favourite goal of the, of no, the no. <laughs> so that's the next question um, of course you know what's your favourite goal of the eight scores because um, they're you know, a lot of different goals. Um, you know, there's there's four from Tash we can pick from. Pesca with a good finish. Lena with a good goal. Ruby as well. Outside the box strike as well. So, yeah, what, what's your pick? It's difficult. I am stuck between um, Tash's goal where O'Brien assisted because I think the build-up to that goal was pretty good. Um, I like the turn from O'Brien. The ball through was perfect, and then obviously clinical from Tash, or and this might be slightly biased or Peskits, um, yeah. because you could see how much she wants to score. Mm. Um, obviously, we've mentioned before she's been brilliant so far this season, electric, um, providing a lot of assists, and now has got a goal too, which is good. Um, and the amount of times you could see that she'd been working on it in training, that she cut in uh, onto her left, and then. Gave it a go, a whipping sort. Of, I call it the Mo Salah. Yeah. Um, and if you watch Liverpool, you know what that is. 
um, but didn't manage to get one of those. But then when she, yeah, the strike was good. Um, and I was just really happy for her. So between those two, but what about you? Yeah, I'm trying to now, because I haven't watched them back yet. So I'm trying to visit. I know, it's hard to remember. Yeah, I will admit I've probably forgotten Tash's opening two goals in the first half. I think the second half was just so much happened. There's six goals to remember. Um, so I can't really... I think they were just clinical finishes, weren't they, in the first yeah, half? Yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah. She was just in the box, alert, boom, goal, happy days. Um, but yeah, I think maybe her... I think it was a hat-trick I liked. A hat-trick, I think. Because she did the the free, didn't she? Did you know, she? I didn't see that. Did she? she? Free in front of me, which was good. Nice. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll probably have to pick... Maybe Ruby's goal, actually, because that was outside the box, weren't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's always good. But I think I like Pesca, how just the build up and just the run as well, and, and even just the celebration, because that's that makes it for me as well. As a, as a photographer pitch side, yeah. you know, I have to I have to put that involved in the, the voting and the judging because um I liked how she scored and she just ran, you know, right in front of me. So it was like perfect sort of it's she knew what she was doing. Yeah. She was thinking of the Instagram afterwards. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. But um but you know, all goals added something, didn't they? And uh mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe not Nia's because it <laughs> trickled in, but they all count. They all count. They I think count. Nia, after the game, she, um, went, of course, we'll, we'll get onto the crowd and everything at Chorley, but after the game, she came, you know, she just said to me, you know, oh, just just about, just about went in. She was happy <laughs> that Lena left it because if she yeah. didn't, we said she could have been offside. Um, but yeah, eight goals, which is good. It helps the goal difference, which is great. Which mm-hmm. is great to see indeed. And of course, Tash did get in the match ball. Um, I think that's her first ever match ball. I think it is. Before, but before, but of course, you know we have maybe not as many balls to give away. I think you know maybe in previous times, like now, we need to keep that. But because I think this was a a, a moment that she definitely deserved. Definitely was scoring four goals. Yeah. I think she scored four goals last year, didn't she? Against the team, maybe was it good to chat on them? No. Mm. All that's testing my memory, Ross. So we'll get that stuff in a second. I'll try to find it while Blue um, talks about it. But that that's a nice moment because I think she got all the players to sign it as well. We got a picture of her holding it. But that's just a nice little touch in it for players when you get a hat trick or whatever to get the match ball. Yeah, for sure. I can't imagine how many she's meant to have at home. Yeah. Um, it's probably a good thing because she'd probably need to buy like a bigger house so there's a room just purely for hat trick balls. Um, but yeah, it's nice. I, I like that a lot. Um, when I saw the photos, I was like, yeah, that's good. That's good. She definitely deserves that. Um, so yeah, please for her and. Yeah, what else should we get into? I'm just Megan? Oh, you're, you're having a look? Yeah, actually, fine enough, in the Cheltenham game, actually, there's a lot of goal scorers in that game. And the last time we played them, so Bonnie mm-hmm. scored two, um, EK scored in that game, Holly scored in that game, Pescott scored in that game, and then, of course, former town players, Sarah Brazera Carrera and Anna scored. So there's a lot of goal scorers in that one. I'm just trying to find... I swear she scored four goals last year. I swear she did. Or maybe just making this up. I know she's definitely scored four goals in the game before. Um, so maybe I'm making it up. <laughs> maybe not for the first time. Um, I swear she's at Plymouth away. I swear. Yeah, it might have been. Two. Okay, two last year. Maybe it wasn't last year then. It was a year before. I'm sure Kieran will know the stat. Maybe yeah. even Tash knows the stat herself. Maybe she's got all of her goals written down. Um, <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt um, it too. That's a, lot, that's a lot of goals to remember. 137 to note down. As, there's a lot of goals against different teams. It'd be interesting. One of these days, we'll have to go through, you know, her all of her goals, like who she scored most against, how many hat tricks. Yeah, stuff. yeah. I think we were like hoping to like even look at like find assists as well because she must be. She's, oh my god! You know, assist goals as well. So um, that, sounds, that sounds like a job for Kieran. Yeah, Kieran, if you're listening, my friend, I'm sure you are. That's something we can look at. Maybe when she gets to 150, we'll have to look at you yeah. know, different little stats and facts about it. But um, but yeah, what's what a weekend eight nil? And um, you you were talking about Megan. Let's let's talk about. Of course, she missed the game um, because she's in Scotland at the moment because she won another cap for Scotland. She also wore the captain's armband during the game as well. Um, I'm sure she got you know, some experience from you. You know, knowing how to to wear it and stuff and all that. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that stuff. <laughs> um, and um, I think she's actually, as of this recording, I think she's playing today because we're recording, two, this is morning, Tuesday. I think she's playing this afternoon 
um, against Hungary again. I think they've got a double header against yeah, Hungary. Yeah, they header. played against them um, on Friday afternoon. They beat them 2 0. So a clean sheet, which is always good to see. But um, that's another nice thing. I think we had Mega on the podcast, you know, last month, didn't we? And um, she's just proud to play for her mum's country and, you know, to play international football at any level. It's, it's you know, a great achievement. Yeah, it's a great achievement, especially being captain, um, for sure. Um, especially, I think a lot of the girls come from Scottish clubs. So for her to come in as from an English club and also be the captain um, is a big deal. Um, she texted me on Sunday, actually, at halftime. I was like, OK, halftime update. How are we doing? I had a look on Twitter, but I want some blue insight. Um, so I gave her the rundown um, and obviously asked how the camp was. She said, yeah, she's really enjoying it. Um, and yeah, she feels like she's been there a long time, I think, which camps do have that sort of effect on you because it's literally football 24 hours a day. Um, you sort of lose sight of reality um, yeah. because you're constantly in hotels and stuff like that. But I think she's really enjoying it and hopefully she gets some minutes this afternoon um, and comes back injury free and ready to go again. Yeah, definitely. Because I think, um, of course, England and Scotland, they played, didn't they? The you know the, the senior yeah. teams, um, and I'm sure she sort maybe somewhat divided in that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, I'm playing for Scotland's under 19s, and then yeah, like of course I've got English family as well. So I think we I put her on the spot dinner on the pod when we time. Like, what, what's your yeah? Who, who are you supporting for? You know, so um, but yeah, I think there's there's a lot of games to play. I think the under 23s for Scotland are playing today against Australia, um, and of course yeah. She's playing today, uh, Meg, for, for the under 19. So uh, all the best to them. They're playing. Yeah, hungry again. Uh, 1 p.m. kickoff. So what, you're probably she's already made another cap or whatever. Maybe she could score her first goal. You never know. You never know. You never know. Actually, goal. that brings the point up. Did you see uh, the Ruby Doe overhead kick? Yes. Yes. Oh, oh that would so have been so close. Oh. So close. But if she had scored that, Meg would have been fuming. <laughs> yeah. Although you expect that from an attacker, for a defender, yeah, you yeah. Know, it's, it's like actually more impressive. Actually, if it's a defender attack, it's like actually, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm happy. You know, it's like if if you know yeah. someone like Pesk or even Tash, I think Tash scored like sort of like their kick once before mm -hmm. in a game. So a diving header and stuff. But yeah, when it comes for a defender, you just expect from the corners this is just a bullet header. But you know. Meg, of course, finally scored her first goal on the opening day against Cardiff, you know, back post, nice little poaching goal. But, um, yeah, if Ruby did score that overhead kick, that would have probably been, yeah, up there as goal of the season so far. But uh, I don't know, at the moment, I'm trying to think what is up there as goal of the season, Blue, because there's a lot to pick from. Um, I think Tash's goal against MK is probably up there. Yeah. The, the meaning for that. I think Meg will be up there as well, even though it was only a back post finish, but, you know, it's the first goal, late winner as well. So, there's a few contenders already. Um, I'm sure there'll be many more to come. I'm just waiting. I'm, once again, I'm sorry to say it again, and she's going to hate me for this. I'm just waiting for that Kyra Funder, Funder bolt from somewhere. Um, you know, I'm, I said I think she's leaving it for a big, big moment. So, uh, which would be good to see. Uh, but yeah, any other business from the game then, Blue? Um, as we mentioned, another good crowd. We were we did the call out. Um, can we make it a hat trick of 500 plus? And they did it again, the fans, 541 this week, which is just is fantastic. I think once again, we got we, we, we asked fans to get there a bit early. So the, the queue, because I know that there's only one turnstile. So, you know, the queue can go for miles, but um, it's just good again. And I think Lena, she got asked in a club interview with Kieran, like how important, you know, it is for the crowd. And even just, you know, if you had done a bad pass or just that, just that, I help you just the extra little momentum just the mo motivation to to get that extra you know when you're feeling a bit oh I'm a bit tired here but when you got the fans really backing you I'm sure it just helps yeah um I think last season we had the best fans in the league and it's only got bigger and better this season um so for sure we've got the best fans in the league now um they're amazing um obviously sharp in numbers I've got another average for you over the past three home games 548.7 oh. which is it's big yeah. really big um and also it comes it's it's one thing all those people turning up but it's another thing with the cheering with the chanting with the drums um and obviously all the kids that come along i've definitely seen an increase in kids wanting autographs and yes. photos and and that's amazing to do after the game as well 
Um, so yeah, a big, big thank you. We, we always appreciate it um, because it really does make a difference um, when you play football sort of silently compared to when you've got a load of fans backing you and caring about you winning the game. It really does make a difference. So thank you very much. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have another game this weekend um, since Cheltenham pulled out. Yeah, and uh, we'll go on to that shortly. But yeah, it's now becoming like a, a regular thing now after the game. I know it was before last year, there was always, you know, fans and everyone wanting pitch and signature. But now it's like become like a every player is doing it. Every player is doing it. I'm not saying they didn't do it last year, but it's like they just want they, all the fans want every player, which is just good to see. And, you know, pitches, autographs, signing, you know, the programs. And I'm now I'm trying my best to capture those moments because you know it's mm. just for us to to look back on and just it just shows that we've got we've got such a great backing which is just is unbelievable and I would say you know it's probably hard for me to say but like these these games aren't the game like the big games if you know what I mean no the, the, you know we we haven't yet played the Portsmouths of the world and you know I know no respect to Plymouth and Cheltenham London Bees but they're not probably our promotion rivals. But to get those sort of crowds is just incredible for those games uh, because they are still big games. Because it's I'm now contradicting myself because you know any, every game is a big game. Definitely in this early stage of the season, um, I'm now getting laughed at by all our viewers. But they're just not the big teams. You know, Portsmouth is the big game when we play them. Hashtag when they come here and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, keep up you know the support, you know girls and boys because it's just great to see because it's not just you know young girls and young boys kind of watch. It's you know different you know people of all ages coming which is good and just good to see families come as well so keep up the support um it, it, it's so important and um, it's just good you know to, to, it just shows that we've got that community there so keep it up but um yeah sadly no game this weekend to to complete the is it four games at home in a row would it have been i think i think it would have been potentially. it would have been the fourth i think yeah because of, yeah, so. yeah, so sadly that yeah, it's not going to happen because yeah, Cheltenham have pulled out of the Fornal Cup, and um, sadly I think it's because um, just budget reason really. It wasn't because they we've just beaten a main nil. Um, I think they made a decision before the game, and uh, yeah, it, it's a shame. Um, but it, it, sadly, but it just it proves once again there's still a lot to work to do in the women's game where teams are having to pull out of competitions or. They can't fill the team. Sadly, there's a team um, near near us. St Ives have um, they've uh, basically pulled out of their league and they've actually folded because they just haven't got enough players. Which it just it proves that women's football still needs a lot of work. Um, of course, we've had the World Cup, which is uh, lovely to see. We've got the Super League, we've got everything like that. But when you go down the pyramid, there's still a lot of work to do, Blue. And um, it's a shame, but it's just one of those things. Yeah, um, it definitely shows that. I think they. I think they might have travelled in like players' cars, or quite a few of them. Um, but you've got sort of a difference between the few clubs like us, Portsmouth, um, hashtag, who are all being backed by men's sides, because that's the sort of stage women's football's at. We still need backing from the, the men's club. And where that doesn't happen, suddenly there are gaps in, in the sort of funding and your ability to, if you've gotten away, I mean, they were probably hoping for a home cup draw. Um, so there's no additional expenses, um, but it does, yeah, it does show, and that is the reality. It's not all since the World Cup and the Euros and whatever. Um, there are still gaps, but it, there probably needs to be gaps still um, to keep on pushing it. It's not all going to happen at once, and suddenly women's football was profitable because even at the top, it probably isn't at that stage at the minute. Um, so yeah, it sort of ground, it keeps you grounded in terms of. Yes, women's football is going to the moon, but there are some sort of steps within that process. It has to be sustainable to some sort of extent. And of course, clubs are going to fall behind, um, which is sad to see. Um, but obviously, I, I hope they they sort of continue the season and can fund that throughout, which I'm, I'm sure they will be able to. Um, but yeah, it, obviously, it's not a position you want to see any team being in. Um, but yeah, I'm also glad it's not because we won 8-0. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that is. I did feel for them it, before I knew that they weren't coming back next week. I was like, "Oh, that's going to be a long trip back." Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, obviously, wish them all the best in in their season. Yeah, definitely. Because yeah, it's it's back to back weekends. I think if it was yeah. maybe you know next month or something, then they may have gone okay, that's fine. But 
yeah, you know, there's some teams at that level that, yeah, they haven't got the budget that can help them do that way. And of course, mm-hmm. that, that competition, the Fornal Cup, there's no um, no prize money. You know, even yeah. if you, you know, at least with the FA Cup, if you get knocked out, you still get like, you know, prize money for for losing which is which is great that's why the fa cup is such a magical competition of course for us it's it's a great competition as well because we get the prize money if we we progress we you know we got some decent prize money the last few years which is good um but i think even i think even like at the early stages i think you can still get like three grand or something like yeah, that. yes and that's that's a lot to teams yeah. um especially that chapman was a lot to us um, especially since it went up last year i'm not sure about this season it might have gone up again not sure Maybe. i need to confirm that um, but it's some of the prizes are, are big, um, so it, it makes sense to prioritise that comp- competition over the Fornal Cup for sure. Definitely, definitely. And uh, yeah, we, we wish uh, Cheltenham all the best. Of course, we'll be heading to Cheltenham at some stage. Um, but yeah, I think we've said that before, haven't we, Blue? When we go to Plymouth and like to think if you were that team, you know, you, like, well, we've seen it with uh, with Norwich for the the men's team. They uh, they lost six two down there. It's a long way to go and lose like heavily. And like I think they were like four 0 down at half time so like go all that way and then to be that down luckily we've, when we've gone the Plymouth we've won 5 nil back back time so it's like a nice journey home but yeah that, that is a long trip but when you get to this level you know you have you have to travel you know different places so uh, you know it's, it's just part and parcel of football isn't it um, but yeah good weekend Blue uh, but yeah no game this weekend but as the season is now very much up and running uh, I think now we've already mentioned seven games or I think it's six games, sorry, six games done. Uh, how would you describe it in one word, Blue? I always do this on every podcast, I always put someone on the spot. Um, I did tell you this before. Recording. I know, I know. Uh, I'm going to describe it as building. Mm-hmm. Um, I think our performances so far have, in different areas of the pitch, have built and built and built on, the, on each other. Um, and I don't think we're at our full potential yet. I think what we saw on Sunday against Cheltenham was the best we've seen so far this season. But I still think there's more to come from this team for sure. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's been a good start to the season. Um, obviously, the hashtag loss wasn't ideal, but they look like they're, they're doing very well. And there's obviously Portsmouth in, in this league too, who are also doing well. Um, but so far, so good. Um, obviously, lots of goals, lots of goals compared to last season, which is good to see. Um, and yeah, looking forward to seeing the continuous improvement and progression um, because I, I do believe there's a lot more to come from this team. And I think Joe and all the staff believe that too. Yeah, definitely. What about you? What was your one word? I had two words in mind. One word is just exciting. I'm just, mm-hmm. I've just been so excited to come and watch the game. You know, I know I'm there taking pictures, but I just enjoy watching this team. You know, like last year there was some good performances, but this year it's just a different level. Yeah. And I'm just excited to come home and away, just watching this team, you know, scoring goals, you know, defending well, building from the back, you know, midfield. I just love watching, you mentioned, I just love watching Bonnie and Kyra play in that midfield. It's just, yeah. uh, they just, they just start the, the play, don't they? Which is just good to see. The other words, maybe, you know, a big word for me to say, magnificent. Just magnificent. Nice, Ross. Nice. Nice word. I, I, know, I knew this word before, so don't, you know, keep <laughs> out there going, oh, Ross, big word for you. Um, but yeah, just magnificent. And uh, Joe Sheen and co have um, have done a fantastic job. You know, I think this has been a really good pre-season as well. We, you yeah. know, the pre-season has been gone and dusted already. But, um, you know, Joe, Nicky, um, of course, Paul Walker, the goalie coach, um, you know, the physios, everyone behind the scenes that, you know, maybe don't get a mention, you know, Phoebe as well, one of the first mm-hmm. team coaches as well, um, just working so hard on the training grounds and everything like that. Even Pewey, Sally, is, is no longer with us. He's still alive, don't worry, but he's just, uh, he's, he's, you know, he's gone on to a different role now. But uh, it's just, it's just, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just great. It's just the harmony, you know, Blue, the harmony of the squad is just, it's just such a, it's a it's such a difference. And um, and we still got players like yourself, EK, you know, still to return, which is fantastic. I think there's who else is it? Any other players? I think that's it in terms of like first teamers um, yeah. to come back. You know, we've had Lucio Brian back, but yeah, I, just, I can't wait to see both of you back. Definitely EK. You know, would, I wouldn't say we're losing that passion, but she should be right in there with the, yeah. the after every win. Right, kissing now. the badge will come back. Yeah, definitely kissing the badge. Um, but yeah, it's just been you know a fantastic start of the season. You know, I know the hashtag defeat, but maybe that's what we needed. Maybe just to go, okay, it's not going to be 
you know, easier notes. We've seen, you know, Watford go up now, so Hampton go up the last two years. Um, but the goal difference, Blue, that's, that's helped as well. Yeah, it's healthy. Um, and we know how important that is. So that is learning from mistakes, um, which is good to see because, like, I think this league will be extremely tight again. Um, I can't see there being much of a gap between first, second and third, or maybe even fourth. Um, so every every little bit counts. And at the minute, I think we're performing well and the goal difference is up. So, yeah, it's it's looking good. But obviously our next game against Oxford away, Yes, I think it's October 8th, is that right? Yes, October 8th, Oxford away. So that'll be a tough test. Um, obviously Oxford in the past have been quite a tough team. They've had a bit of a change in in terms of players and obviously now I've got Zoe Barrett um, who used to play for us so that'll be that'll be an interesting game um, and I look forward to that because I know the girls like a like a challenge and yeah of course yeah we won't be recording a podcast until after that game so yeah, yeah. Oxford away um, next up as Blue mentioned the 8th uh, they've got a new manager as well because their manager's yes. gone to Reading is it Reading? yes correct so yeah a very different Oxford side they're, they're not doing that great at the moment they're seventh at the moment but you know any position you know it's just one of those things it's still early days um but yeah i'm just looking quickly on our uh, goal difference yeah we scored 25 goals now blue already this season portsmouth are have beaten us to that just just yet they've 26 26 goals they've just conceded once this season which is incredible so fair play to them um but hashtag are still leading the way up top uh, Rugby Borough are third uh, on the same points as us, but of course our goal difference is 20 to their eight. So it does prove you know, mm. that's going to be a big thing. Um, and then your yeah, teams at the bottom at the moment, London B still struggling, Chatham Town, who I think are our next game after Oxford. Um, or there may be a game in there because I think we've got a few blank weekends. I think the 15th, there's still a game to be put in there. So I don't know if it will be the next cup game or you know whatever game, but we'll, we'll find out when when we know and we'll let you know. I'm sure it'll be all on the, the Twitters and the socials and stuff like that. But um, Blue, we, we literally got to an hour, just you and me. Um, we didn't mention, you mentioned, did we, at the beginning? We, we had no, we've got no guests this week. We just thought we wanted to get this out to you. Um, we just thought, let's get it done, me and me and Blue. But we'll make sure we have a guest after the Oxford game. Yes. Um, and, you know, it's just been nice to just me and Blue have a nice, nice, nice little bit of a chinwag, Blue, once again. So, uh, never good pods. Um, any other business? I don't think so. No, I think it's just a thanks to you for your time once again. Um, thanks to all you listeners for getting to this point. But now up with me and Ross and no interesting guests to, to make it bearable. Um, so thank you if you're still listening. Um, also, a big thanks to John Fowler's solicitors. All Ross has got something to say. Sorry, sorry. I want to I wanna mention it. And um, the cutest thing ever happened on the oh, Felix yeah. Bottom pitch. Um, and that, of course, is a shout out to Joe and his uh, little daughter, um it's just it's lovely to see um i was able to get a picture i think connor bennett from beef Sub got a nice picture as well um and yeah i think i think he mentioned after the huddle he's like where's my daughter where's my daughter? <laughs> no yeah yeah and no. brought her on the pitch and that is just great to see i think she's one of the youngest supporters we've ever had i think she's even gone to port and road games as well which is yeah. just amazing to see and yeah shout out to uh his fiance and of course mother of of uh his daughter of course um uh, Ebony, who's um, you know, who's at every game, just like his mum and dad. I know they listen to the pod, so shout out to to to, uh, to Bill and a uh, co. You know, it's, it's you know, it's it's great support from them. Um, so yeah, shout out to them. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention it, Blue. I was going to mention it earlier, but yeah. this must be the smallest Ipswich Town show ever produced. Yes, very cute, great pictures as well. Um, but yes, we will see you in a couple of weeks' time after the Oxford away game. Um, and yeah, look after yourselves before then.